On Friday, March 1st of 2019, a young woman was celebrating her birthday party with her husband and friends. But it wouldn't be long before her husband did the worst thing imaginable. This is the case of Michael Barnhill. Hello, friend, and welcome to High Time Crime. My name's Joel, and on here I specialize in true crime and also climbing trees. How do I get down from here? But anyways, today we're going over the case of Michael Barnhill and what he did to his wife Marley and their friends. You're going to learn about a twisted man and a very kind-hearted young woman who was just trying to do the right thing. For our story, we're headed to a small little town known as Carrollton, located in Mississippi. It's a part of a larger Carroll County, but Carrollton only has about 400-ish people living there. Its total area is 0.81 of a square mile of land, and so in other words, it's tiny. This is the type of place where everybody knows everybody. The town was officially established in January of 1834 and incorporated on February 19th of 1836, long before I was born. Or was it? But Carrollton is one of the largest historic districts in the National Register of Historic Places in the United States. There's 18 historic sites located there, and so you'll probably find a lot of good knowledge. If you ever happen to be in the area, you probably know someone, but there are some pretty good things to do. You can visit the Moreau Museum, which is home to the John Sidney McCain Collection. John McCain was a senator and presidential candidate. You could also go to the Mississippi Petrified Forest, which is a place of beauty and fascination. Some would say it feels like you could cast a spell here. If you are hungry, don't you worry. The number one Chinese restaurant is here. Oh, no, not number one like the best ever. Like, that's their name. The food's probably still pretty good. But sadly, none of these exciting options are the reason as to why we're in town today. Marley Marie Jones Barnhill was born on March 2nd of 1994 to Sandy and Brooks Jones in Granada, Mississippi. While most of her life isn't really talked about or known, we do know a few things. Marley had an older sister named Ashley, and by all appearances, they got along well. She was always smiling and had the best laugh and a beautiful soul. Marley graduated high school in 2010 from Winona Christian School. After this, she went to college at Holmes Community College, and in 2014, she graduated. A bit after this, she became a nurse at Tyler Holmes Memorial Hospital in Winona. Marley had been trying to become one for a while, and when it finally happened, oh, she was just so excited. She had what it took to be a great nurse, and she took her job very serious. Around this time is when she met a guy named Michael Barnhill. He was born on September 29th of 1988, and we don't have a lot of information on him. We know that he's from Winona and worked at Scott Petroleum as a route salesman from August of 2010 to September 17th of 2016, when he started working at Wall & Wall, a logging company where he was a professional wood hauler. How exactly Marley and Michael met is beyond me. But for the first few years of their relationship, it appeared to be going okay. I mean, at least well enough for them to want to get married. And they did. In November of 2016, the couple got married and moved in together. They got a dog named Bella, who Marley absolutely adored. And soon, sometime in 2018, she started a Facebook page called Get Glamorous with Marley, where she posted products for a company called Unique. They specialize in makeup, and their mission is to uplift, empower, validate, and build self-esteem in women all around the world. Marley was really good at doing this, 
And you can definitely tell she had a lot of fun while doing it. She had an incredibly bright future and was ready to take it on. Little did she know that she had an evil husband who at any moment was ready to snap. On Friday, March 1st of 2019, it was a cloudy day, about 50-ish degrees. But Marley, well, she was as bright as ever. March 2nd, the next day, was her 27th birthday. And she was super excited because this night, she was going to celebrate her birthday party that was thrown by a few of her besties. This included Maori Suggs, Amber Garrard, Brooks, and Jim Harrell, and Marley's husband, Michael. Before Marley and Michael went to Brooks and Jim's house, that's where the party was being held, Marley went on Facebook Live to talk about the new month, her goals, and it being her birthday month. Hello, girls. Happy Friday. Hashtag Marley's birthday month. That's kind of a long hashtag, but what else? Put some Uplift Beauty Serum on my face, and then we're going to moisturize, and then we're going to get right to it, because I'm going to Brooksy's house. I have to be there at 5.30. Well, I don't have to, but I'm gonna. Tonight, I'm going to my, one of my really good friend's houses. We're going to karaoke and sit on her back porch and just hang out. I'm in such a good mood, guys. Can you tell? Can anybody tell? I'm so excited that I'm off work for like ever. Dang near it. Okay, Michael, will you put the dogs up? All done. What do you guys think? I hope y'all all have a great Friday night. And I will either see y'all super early in the morning before I go to the zoo or tomorrow night when I get home. I hope y'all all have a great night. Be safe, whatever you're doing. We're going to be safe. And I will talk to y'all later. Thank y'all so much for watching. I love y'all. Bye, guys. A bit after this live, Marley and Michael left to go to Brooks and Jim's house. Not a single person there had even the slightest clue that this night could potentially be their last. I can guarantee that up until a certain point, not one of them had that thought anywhere in their mind. Well anyway, after arriving to the Harrell's house, everyone began drinking and having some fun doing karaoke and other things. Marley was specifically having a great night and even took this picture with Maori. The only thing was that Michael was also drinking, but not like everyone else. He was really drinking, and it got to the point where he started to become belligerent and very angry and combative. Marley and friends didn't like how Michael was acting, and so they were actively discouraging it. Marley quickly thinking, took Michael's truck keys in order to try and keep him from taking the truck. She didn't want him driving drunk and potentially harming someone on the road. Michael wasn't having any of that, and so he decided to secretly go to his truck and grab a 40 caliber handgun he kept inside, and he then went back to the party concealing it. Next, he went to the back porch where everyone else was hanging out. Marley had just recently quit smoking, but clearly what Michael was doing this night was stressing her out, and so she decided to have a cigarette at about 11.30 a.m. Michael saw Marley smoking, and in a fit of rage, absolutely lost it. He walked up to her and knocked the cigarette out of her mouth. Marley then went to pick it up off of the ground, but Michael shot her in the chest, killing her. Jim Harrell saw this happen and immediately tried to go to Marley's aid, but Michael then shot him, killing him. Brooks Harrell, Jim's wife, then tried to go to Jim's aid, but Michael shot her twice, wounding her badly. Maori Suggs and Amber Garrard were outside when this happened, and they witnessed it. Immediately, with quick thinking, they went 
inside the house, went upstairs and ran into the Harold's young son's room, and this was after Amber was shot at. The young son was 10 years old and sleeping at the time. Maori and Amber felt like they needed to try and protect him, so they grabbed the boy and all three of them got into the closet and they called 911. By the time the deputies arrived to the house, they found Marley and Jim dead. Brooks was very badly injured and they were going to transport her via helicopter to the hospital. But while she was in the ambulance to get to the helicopter, she ended up passing away. Michael wasn't at the house when police arrived, but within a bit of time, he returned. He claimed that he had no idea what happened, but Maori and Amber told the police that it was Michael who was responsible. He then tried to run away from the scene, and so the deputies had to use a taser to stop him. Next, Michael was arrested, and this case was pretty cut and dry from the beginning so an investigation wasn't exactly hard. Eight months later, on November 18th of 2019, at 30 years old, Michael Barnhill pleaded guilty for murder and was sentenced to serve three life terms plus 20 years in prison. The 20 years in prison is for trying to shoot Amber. Originally, he was pleading not guilty, but he changed his plea to guilty as part of a plea agreement with the district attorney's office. Michael was originally indicted for capital murder, and he could have potentially got the death sentence, but his life got spared. At least we know that he'll be rotting away exactly where he belongs. Both Brooks and Jim Harrell were born in Greenwood, Mississippi, living not too far from each other. They both graduated from Kruger Chula Academy and then went to separate colleges. Brooks was a registered nurse and worked for the Greenwood LaFleur Hospital and the Greenwood Orthopedic Clinic. They had two children together, both boys. Jim was a licensed professional land surveyor and also co-owned a business with his brother Trent for 10 successful years. Both Brooks and Jim loved the Lord, church, music, and the people at the church they attended or Kruger Baptist Church. They were active members here, and Brooks played the bass guitar and sang, while Jim played guitar for their praise team. Both of them also taught children in the preschool department. Jim loved hunting and fishing, and spent a lot of hours together with his two boys. He was an assistant coach for his youngest son's baseball team. Brooks was 39 years old, and Jim was 44. They were great parents and overall great friends who put their lives on the line in an attempt to help their good friend. They're heroes in my book and deserve recognition. And so does Maori Suggs and Amber Gerard. What they did was incredibly selfless. And the immediate thought about trying to save the Harold's son is courageous. Those two are also heroes. Marley Marie Jones, as put on her obituary, was a beautiful soul who was always smiling. She had a very bubbly personality, was devoted to succeeding, and loved everyone around her. She was truly a great person who didn't deserve what happened to her in the slightest. I really hope that wherever her and Brooks and Jim are, that they're resting peacefully and that their families are able to one day find some closure. Brooks and Jim left behind two sons, one 15 and one 10, and I can only imagine. And I hope that they know that they're very strong and had phenomenal parents. But anyways, thank you for watching this episode of High Time Crime. If true crime is your thing, then please subscribe and hit the like button because that's all we do. I also have a second account with my brother named Horror Flying, where we tell stories about everything paranormal. This includes true crime, mysteries, and things that are just downright spooky. I'd greatly appreciate if you subscribed to that too. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Take care, friend.